ladies and gentlemen, let's read Game of the video. Let us take a look at Tomb Raider Definitive Edition on the PlayStation 4 and PC as a graphics analysis. I've also done this as an article where I've got a hell of a lot of screenshots, high resolution of course, and a super high quality bitrate version of the video, a short version of course, for you to download so you can see it at like the native quality if you so desire. So let's discuss. Well, the PC version I'm running with SSAA uh, times 2. Why times 2? I could go to times 4, but then most people couldn't run it on those graphical settings, so it's kind of unfair. Second issue is that then it's not even slightly on a parity towards the PlayStation 4 since it's only using FXAA, which it's quite a nice type of anti-aliasing, but it can introduce some shimmering, and it's not as accurate as MSAA, and certainly not as accurate as SSAA. So which version is the better looking one? Because I know that's really what you want to know. Honestly, and this is going to sound like a cop-out, but it's really not. Neither version is the better looking version. It's not because they are exactly the same, it's actually because both versions excel in different things. TressFX, for example, on the PS4 is using TressFX 2, which requires less resources, but on top of that, it's also more accurate. In the, the article um, for this very graphics analysis, I've also linked to my analysis of TressFX technology, so you can take a look at that if you so wish. So that leads to less random, strange incidents with the hair, as you will see with at the end of this video. In addition to that, the PC version, however, does feature higher resolution textures. Uh, this is particularly noticeable if you're really looking for it, particularly on like Lara's clothing. You can see that there's definitely a little bit more texture detail there. Now, one thing I'd like to clear up in terms of the lighting is I haven't changed any of the color adjustments whatsoever, so all gamma uh, contrast, everything is left to default. So it's obvious that there are some definite uh, changes regarding the gamma uh, contrast and saturation and so on for the PS4 version. I'm actually quite a fan of them, but I wouldn't really go as far as say they're a new lighting system. With that said, you do get the inclusion of subsurface scattering for lighting. If you want more details on that, you can just check the article. And Lara definitely has a larger array of facial animations, which definitely do help to humanize her more. You can certainly see it, particularly in her eyes, for example. On the flip side, the PlayStation 4, as far as I can tell, and I did uh, numerous testing, I actually ran through some areas several times, um, Tessellation seems to be missing, um, which is a bit of a shame. Tessellation is an option, of course, on the PC, and it can leave things a little bit blockier, mostly because of level of detail differences, particularly with camera. And another slightly odd thing is that you'll notice less motion blur. Now, Maybe that's a that's a visual decision, but in my opinion, it's somewhat noticeable, particularly like when you're sliding down uh, banks, that type of thing, towards like your death. A new foliage system is present on the PS4, but it's certainly not without issues. There are some clipping concerns that I do raise in this very video. It's certainly not like they're awful. It does make the world a little bit nicer, but at the same time, you do wish that, you know, it, it didn't clip through rocks and stuff, but that's just an issue with game engines as a whole right now. So, there is more to this, but as I said, the whole thing can be found in the article. I'm also going to be doing frame rate tests very soon as well for you guys on the PS4. So, my final thoughts, which version is the best one to buy? Well, it really depends on, you know, do you have a personal preference, for example, on the control method? Personally, I prefer keyboard and mouse when it comes to aiming. I find myself really crap on a pad. Just my personal opinion, but I also do like the speaker out um, on the PS4's uh, controller. I think it does add a nice sense of immersion. I would also like to point out that the, P the PC version is noticeably cheaper. And because there's no exact clear winner when it comes to the graphics, for example, as I mentioned, regarding the edge of the PC, regarding texture quality, anti-aliasing, and so on and so forth. 
It's really tempting to say the PC is the slightly better version, but I also really do like the facial animations on the PS4, and so I'm actually going to say this one's a complete and utter... I wouldn't call it a draw, um, but I'd certainly say... The which version is best really comes down to what type of PC you've got and what your priority is, particularly if you're, for example, a fan of higher frame rates, then definitely the PC is the way to go if you really want super duper high resolution or you want uh, very high levels of anti-aliasing, tessellation and so on, then the PC is the better option. On the other hand, better facial animations and so on on the PS4, simply because they were not implemented at the time of the PC's release, which is a real shame in my opinion. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Uh, check out the arc article if you want. I remember that uh, high quality download. And I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.